wings in the quiet of autumn. When the air turns crisp and the leaves whisper their descent, a quiet magic takes to the sky. I speak to you in English, but my heart, it is French, and it finds poetry in these small moments of transition. Today, at the beginning of October, we are on the threshold of the season of remembrance, Halloween, a time when the veil between worlds is said to thin. It is a time for stories and for mysteries that we feel more than we understand. I wish to tell you a small true story about the quietest of wings, the ones that flutter like a soft breath against the coming twilight. We will speak of butterflies, moths, spirits, and science. A story to make you shiver, not with fear, but with wonder. Every year, as the days grow shorter, and the air in North America begins to carry a distinct chill, an incredible journey begins. Millions of monarch butterflies, like a river of living gold, take to the sky. They are driven by an ancient, unspoken instinct, a biological imperative that guides them south over thousands of miles. Their destination is the Oyamel fir forests, high in the mountains of Michoacan, Mexico. This migration is one of nature's greatest spectacles, but for the people who live in these mountains, it is a spiritual event, timed with breathtaking precision. The butterflies begin to arrive in late October and early November, coinciding perfectly with Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. Families build intricate altars, or ofrendas, adorned with marigolds, candles, photographs, favorite foods, and drinks of the deceased. It is a time not of sadness, but of joyful remembrance. The local communities, particularly the indigenous Purepesha people, believe these butterflies are the returning souls of their ancestors, the almas of their loved ones, making their annual journey home. A messenger from beyond. The idea that a butterfly can be a carrier of the human soul is not confined to the mountains of Mexico. It is a delicate thread woven through the folklore of many cultures across the globe. In ancient Ireland and Scotland, a white or golden butterfly seen near a dying person or flitting about the home after a death was the soul of the departed bidding a final farewell. Rooted in metamorphosis, a humble caterpillar, a still chrysalis like a tomb, and the reborn butterfly, this insect becomes a symbol of transformation. From ancient Greece, where psyche meant both butterfly and soul, to native traditions, it symbolizes resurrection, rebirth, and the spirit's immortality. In grief, a lingering butterfly can feel like a personal message, a hello from someone gone, but not forgotten. The monarch's orange and black pattern graces sugar skulls and papel picado, the butterfly links life and death, past and present, memory returning home year after year. Um, well, that is the thought I leave you with. Now, let us turn our gaze from the warm sunlit flutter of the butterfly to the shadowed world of its nocturnal cousin, the moth of the genus Calyptra. The mood shifts just a little. In the folklore of Southeast Asia and parts of Eastern Europe, there are whispers of a moth with a dark thirst. These are the insects nicknamed vampire moths. The name alone conjures gothic images, perfect for Halloween. Unlike soft nectar-sipping tubes, their proboscis is strong, sharp, and barbed. It pierces fruit skins to drink juice, and yes, can pierce the thick hides of animals to drink blood. Male vampire moths have been seen landing on humans, and with a subtle prick, drawing blood. The sensation, a slight sharp pain and a lingering itch, like a mosquito bite. The gentle dusty wing becomes a cape, the feeding tube becomes a fang, blurring nature and the supernatural. A reminder that familiar corners of nature hide secrets that challenge perception. While the name Vampire Moth is wonderfully dramatic, the scientific reality is more nuanced and fascinating. The science is calm and clear, replacing the dark myth with a story of evolutionary adaptation. 
The primary reason males seek blood is salt, sodium and minerals. They pass these to females during mating, improving egg viability for the next generation. Ancestors pierced fruit, later fluids from wounds or tears rich in salts. Eventually, some species leapt to skin. The bite may leave a small red welt, but these moths aren't known disease vectors. Bites are rare. The moths aren't malicious hunters but resourceful parents-to-be. The truth, grounded in observation, is still dark and exciting. Science enhances the mystique, and a moth passing a gift of salt gathered from blood to its mate is as compelling as any legend. As Halloween night descends, cloaking the world in shadow and possibility, I invite you to become a quiet observer. This is a night for magic, found not in grand illusions, but in small, real wonders. Step outside into the cool air. Let your eyes adjust to the twilight. Watch the wings that flicker in the dusk. What messages might they carry on this night when the veils are thin? If you live along their path, look for a monarch. A flash of orange against deepening blue. If you see one, pause. Think of home. Think of memory. Think of its pilgrimage across generations. Let it be a symbol of endurance, a soul returning to a place of love. As darkness falls, moths will gather at the glow. Look with curiosity, not fear. Most are harmless travelers of the night. Think of the vampire moth with wonder at nature's strangeness. A bite is rare, and it is no monster. This Halloween, observe gently. Do not disturb. Simply watch, and let the night tell its stories. Thank you for visiting us at Papillon Chateau. To receive updates about our interesting butterfly videos, be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. And remember, at Papillon Chateau, every wing tells a story.